Hi, I'm Wendy from Shiny Happy World, and in this video I'm going to show you how to make this cute horse, or it could be a unicorn pattern. Here's how to make it. Okay, this is the video showing you how to assemble the horse or the unicorn. In this case, I'm going to make the unicorn, uh, if you do have a light box. So to start off with, I'll just show you my setup. So I have my light box. I have the light turned up as bright as it'll go. I've got my placement guide and I have a clear silicone mat. I've got all of my pieces cut out and prepared. That means I've got them cut out on the solid lines. You can ignore all of the dotted lines here. Those are placement guides, which you only need if you are not using a light box. But in this case, I am going to use the eyelashes on my unicorn. And so I do want to transfer those to the fabric side of the paper, of the, of the piece. And to do that, I'm just gonna use a Sharpie. It's a fine tip black Sharpie, and it really doesn't matter that it's permanent because I'm gonna stitch over these lines in black thread. So the you'll never see the marker underneath that, and um, so it doesn't matter that it's permanent. All right, now we are gonna start with piece number one. So piece number one is the horn. If you are opting to make a horse instead of a unicorn, obviously just leave that horn off. But there we go with that in place. Next, we're going to do piece number two, which is the main part of the head. And that just lays down just like that. And now piece number three is the main. Oops, nudged that horn out of place. There we go. And now piece number four is the ear. There that is. And now five is the nostril. You could leave this nostril off if you wanted to. It is a fairly small piece, but it's definitely not impossible to, um, to do the outline stitching on it. <laughs> it might be impossible to remove the paper backing. Um, oh, there it is. So you can leave it off if you like, but I really like the just that little oval, I feel like adds quite a lot to the, to the face. And then we're going to add the eye. And that, if you have trouble seeing the lines through your fabric, just make contact. You don't have to press hard, but just make contact between the layers and those lines will show through much better. All right, so I've got all of that laid in place. It looks good. I'm going to carefully lift up this silicone mat and carry this over to my ironing board. Fuse it in place right on the silicone mat, and then I'm going to let it cool, and then I'll peel it off as one big piece. Then I will position it on my finished block, my final background block for the quilt. Fuse it again, that's a permanent fuse. And then I'll do all of the outline stitching, and I'll bring it back here, and I'll show you the finished unicorn, and also two different horses that I made in different colors. Okay, here is the finished horse. I've done all of the outlining on it. This one is for a quilt that I'm working on that is all farm animals, and all of the animals are in fantasy colors, and they all have this kind of gingham print as part of them, so it's gonna look really cohesive. I've got a couple more versions, though, that I wanna show you. I made a second horse. This is for a Lunar New Year's quilt that I'm working on, so all of the background blocks are gonna be red, which is a traditional color for the Lunar New Year, and all of the animals on the quilt are gonna be in these bright kind of gemstone colors. But I also made a unicorn, and here is the unicorn block. So the unicorn horn does come with the pattern, so you can make it with or without. This is for a quilt that I'm working on that is all fantasy animals, and they're all gonna be on purple backgrounds. These are some of the um, amethyst blenders, and then all of the animals are gonna be different fantastic creatures. 
So you can get the horse or the unicorn pattern. It's the same pattern, just whether you use the horn or not. It's at shinyhappyworld.com. I'm Wendy, and I will see you next time.